I'm telling you, I am having a blast. Everything is getting more and more fun. They're getting deeper and deeper into the chemistry, hydrogen fuel cells. This is what this is about. Hydrogen fuel cell cars. Now, they went through the whole thing about the fuel cell six minutes into it. What I was interested in was how did they get the hydrogen? How are they getting that hydrogen? They're making such a big deal about you know, green energy and all this stuff. Well, yes, but how do you get the hydrogen? Now, I haven't watched it yet. You and I are going to watch it together. Here it comes. In actuality, hydrogen is abundant in nature. As the most common molecule, you will find it in the substances. Hold on, let me come back here. How much confidence it has in the car. All right, they, they're talking about they could shoot bullets at the, the tanks and everything because hydrogen, I'm telling you, that is one hell of an explosive gas. Now, watch this. When the fuel stack nears the end of its line, it can either be repurposed in other applications or disposed of safely and responsibly. The next question, though, is how the hydrogen is produced. In actuality, hydrogen is abundant in nature. As the most common molecule, you will find it in the substances such as water, hydrocarbons, biomass, which you find in plants and animals, and more. The challenge is extracting the hydrogen from these naturally occurring states. The most common method to produce hydrogen is steam methane reformation. This method uses high temperature steam at about 1000 degrees Celsius to produce a reaction with methane gas in the presence of a catalyst which forms hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and a small amount of carbon dioxide. Because all right, let me just mention something to you. The jury said 1000 degrees. And then you got all this equipment and catalysts and all kinds of things going on there to separate the oxygen from the hydrogen. Carbon dioxide and other impurities are then removed through a process called pressure swing absorption, leaving pure hydrogen. But you can swap methane with ethanol, propane, or even gasoline to produce hydrogen. You can also make hydrogen from electrolysis or use electricity and a catalyst to create a chemical reaction that separates the hydrogen molecules from oxygen. Solar power can also be combined with water and a catalyst to generate hydrogen fuel by splitting hydrogen molecules from oxygen. All right, let me just show you something. I think there may be a very simple way to do it, simply by pressure. All right, this is basically exactly what hydrogen and oxygen is. The hydrogens are little tiny things like this. And the oxygen is like this. There's two of these glued to one of these. Now, if we can force that through a membrane, that one will squish right through because it's very small compared to this. So if we had this membrane and these venturis, as I showed you before, hold on. Like this. Where only the red one could get through, that little tiny bugger could get through there. The big one is just too big. It just can't go through. It bounce out of there and get away. And we can harvest strictly the the hydrogen, because that's the one. Of, the hydrogen would be the small one. All right, now let's take a little deeper look. Because don't forget, this is what hydrogen and water looks like. H two O. That's what we're going to use as a fuel source. So we're going to squirt this in there in a vapor. When it gets inside, it's going to be so smashed that the hydrogens will be forced through these little venturis. All right, and they'll just separate, you know, they should. I show this happening with the light. It's the same thing with light as it is with that. This is the light right here. All right, there it is coming through, and they're attached just like they would be with the oxygen and the hydrogen. Exactly the same, really. And they'd stay attached. They wouldn't come apart. However, at the Venturi, because of the restriction was so tuned so perfectly, they had to come apart. And the black was separated from the white. For us, this would be the hydrogen. And we'd have to tube it right off and, and just take it off. And you could use that hydrogen to power 
something to vibrate it because this is really what's happening here at this venture let me show you a, a closer shot but well let me show you a closer shot okay you've seen that I can easily separate the white from the black because the black is a fixed particle and it's huge well guess what hydrogen is tiny compared to oxygen oxygen is 16 times bigger than the hydrogen why can't we just make a really good membrane that will only let the light, little tiny hydrogens through like we did with the Venturi? The Venturi worked this way, as you, I, I've shown it a million times. We use light, which is nothing more than the black particle is fixed. It cannot get small. These can get tiny, and they did. And they squirted right through here and made this, which is fission here. The black ones couldn't get through and they came back together out here. Now, what would we do here? We would hopefully be able to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen through tiny, tiny, tiny little membranes by crushing it. Now, here's what I'm thinking. Instead of putting gasoline in here and squirting it in, this is a fuel injector, you'd end up putting water in here and having like a vibrating slammer almost like um, a piston and you'd have to tune it to the right number of vibrations and then the right size whether it's this type here membrane or a pointed whatever and be able to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen and you might be able to just if you had whatever you needed to do right here just using the water and almost that's about it now the problem was my father did this he did it with a Venturi, but it was so powerful, it cracked the pistons. And I said to him when he was telling me about this, I said, what? What are you talking about, cracked the pistons? He says, yeah, the pistons broke, the engine just broke. And I said, no. And that was when I was a kid. I forgot all about it, but I can understand it now. Because let me show you what happens when hydrogen, raw hydrogen explodes. All right, watch this. This is from the Alex Smith channel, Hydrogen Oxygen Balloon Explosion. Now, hydrogen and oxygen, when they combine together, they are going to turn into water. All right, so they'll turn into, it starts off by hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen gas is H2. All right, oxygen is O2, all right, if they're in a gaseous state. Together, when they combine and explode, you end up with two H2O molecules and one extra oxygen, which changed one of its molecules into energy. Let's think about it that way. And listen to what it does. And this is why it broke the engine. Listen to this. And he tells the kids, keep your mouth open because it could blow your ears out. And I don't think they believed them. But listen to this. You see that? That's not, that's not smoke. That's water vapor because the hydrogen and oxygen is compressed together and made into the two hydrogen H2Os, two H2Os. And the rest was given off as energy, which is in the form of electrons firing out. The kids are loving it. Okay, so once again, let's see how they're getting their hydrogen. Here we go. How much confidence it has in the car. When the fuel stack nears the end of its line, it can either be repurposed in other applications or disposed of safely and responsibly. The next question, though, is how the hydrogen is produced. In actuality, hydrogen is abundant in nature. As the most common molecule, you will find it in the substances such as water, hydrocarbons, biomass, which you find in plants and animals, and more. The challenge is extracting the hydrogen from these naturally occurring states. The most common method to produce hydrogen is steam methane reformation. This method uses high temperature steam at about 1000 degrees Celsius to produce a reaction with methane gas in the presence of a catalyst which forms hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and a small amount of carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide and other impurities are then removed through a process called pressure swing absorption, 
leaving pure hydrogen. But you can't do it. What did he just say? Pressure swing absorption. Okay, this is the best way to show this. This is the fluids flowing through the body of a creature. This is the arterial network. You see all these little tiny passageways that run off it? These are running into blood vessels. The vessels are restrictions. They're extremely restrictive areas. This just is, is big. It can just go boop, 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 boop. No big deal. But when you hit these end tips, that is an extremely high-powered pressure. And it, it literally squirts oxygen out of the blood. I think we could do that with water squirting hydrogen away from the oxygen because of restrictions. Let me show you and see what you think. Okay, I love it when I can cover a couple things with one shot. Now, these, these are the lungs. And you have all these holes in your lungs, they call them alveoli, and they get wrapped around with these blood vessels. This is a close-up, we're going to see it in a second. Can you see all that stuff? No, you believe you can. Now, this is how gases exchange. How do they exchange? Why do you breathe in and it takes oxygen and, and brings it into your body and just automatically spits out the carbon dioxide? How the hell does that happen? How does that exchange occur? Well, it ends up being blood pressure. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. All right, I don't know if this will work, but if it would, it'd be pretty damn cool. Right now, you got ideal blood pressure in your body. There's two different values here. And it's, what, it's measured in what's called millimeters of mercury, which is mmHg, or kPa, which is kilopascals. That's your blood pressure. Now, wh wh why do you need blood pressure? Why do you need a poof? Boom, poof, boom, poof, boom, poof, boom. What's happening with that thump? And you know that somebody, you can, you can, your heart can stop and somebody can go, boom, 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 and you keep it going. Yes, that's because they're moving the blood through your body. Now, why does that oxygenate your cells? Otherwise, they die, they die from no, no oxygen. I can tell you exactly why. It's because of this pressure. The pressure literally squirts the oxygen into the cellular matrix. Okay, let's dig right in here, and I can expand it later. Now, these are the different statistics on, you know, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and so forth. All right, so that we will have to look at in more detail, and that we will have to look at in more detail, how the transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs. And let's make sure we can read this in its entirety about gaseous exchanges. I'm going to come down here kind of slow. Well, you know, you can stop it and just restart it and follow this thing down. And this is how gas is exchanged in your body. And I think somewhere down here, where is it? Hold on, I can't see it from this far. Here it is. All of the gaseous exchanges are regulated by different partial pressures of each gas. Well, how do you regulate the pressures of each gas? Just by pinching them with, <laughs> with the blood vessels. I'm not kidding you. So that you, do, you have to regulate the different partial pressures of each gas that occur each time on each side of the alveolar membrane. That's all it is. It's the pressure on one side versus the pressure on the other. Can I really want the carbon dioxide to go this way because it's a bigger molecule or whatnot and it wants the oxygen to stay on this side? It's something got something to do with that. But it's a membrane and you're starting out primarily, probably, with 
I don't know, gaseous waters, and you know, used to carbon dioxide, I mean, uh, air and um, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, and all that stuff you're breathing in and out all the time. And it has to transfer into your body somehow, and this is how it does it. Whoops. Can't see any of that stuff, can you? Anyway, that's how, this is how it works in your body. That's the lungs and all your organs and all that stuff. All right, so we have at least a good foundation to look at these, these details if we want.